Good morning to each and everyone, especially to our beloved instructor, Engineer Saad Askari. Good morning, classmates. Today, me, Jasani, and Jan Charlie Chang will be discussing Pre-Stress Concrete Designs Chapter 3, Partial Loss of Pre-Stress. Pre-stressing is the process of introducing compressive stress to the concrete to counteract the tensile stress resulting from an applied load. This force which is used to stretch the wire to the required length must be available all the time as a pre-stressing force if the steel is to be prevented from contracting. Contraction of steel wire occurs due to several causes affecting reduction in the pre-stress. This reduction in the pre-stressing force is called loss in pre-stress. The gradual reduction of this introduced compressive stress in a pre-stressed member can be grouped into two categories. One is the immediate elastic loss or short-term losses during the fabrication or construction process including elastic shortening of the concrete and courage losses and frictional losses. And the other one is the time-dependent losses or the long-term loss such as creep, shrinkage, and those due to temperature effects and steel relaxation, all of which are determinable at the service load limit of state of stress in the pre-stress concrete element. There are two methods of introducing pre-stressing to a concrete member, namely pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. Pre-tensioning happens before the casting of the concrete and post-tensioning happens after the hardening of the concrete. Now let us first discuss the loss due to elastic shortening. When the pre-stress is transmitted to the concrete member, there is contraction due to pre-stress. This contraction causes a loss of stretch in the wire. When some of the stretch is lost, pre-stress gets reduced. And if there's only one strand or tendon, there is no elastic shortening losses. But for multiple tendons, the tendon stressed early in the sequence will suffer the losses, and the first tendon stress will suffer the most, while the last has zero loss. And for pre-tensioned, when tendons are cut, the concrete shortens the interval of time by a certain amount, while on post-tensioning, as concrete is already hardened, after cutting the tendons, the concrete doesn't shorten. So basically, it represents that there is a change in strand stress due to elastic shortening equal to the strain strand multiplied by the steel elastic modulus. Next is the loss due to relaxation of steel. It is defined as the decrease in stress with time under constant strain. Due to the relaxation of steel, the pre-stress in the tendon is reduced with time. It depends on the type of steel, the initial amount of pre-stress, and the temperature. And this percentage varies from 1 to 5%. This formula will be explained further by our next reporter. Fp in the formula is the characteristic strength of steel. Further creep in steel takes place mostly during few days. Now let's discuss the loss due to creep of concrete. Deformation due to rearrangement of molecules over a period of time under the application of a constant load is called creep. Creep is the time-dependent deformation due to the permanent force. In pre-stress concrete, pre-stress is the permanent force in the member causing compressive stress at the level of steel. Next is the loss due to shrinkage of concrete. There is contraction due to the drying of concrete and shrinkage strain occurs in concrete. The volumetric changes of concrete structures due to the loss of moisture by evaporation is known as concrete shrinkage. The shrinkage strain causes the steel to lose its stretch, resulting in the loss of pre-stress. Therefore, the loss of stretch is equal to the shrinkage strain. And due to shrinkage, the tendons are loosened and lost in pre-stress, of course. Now, let's talk about the loss due to friction. In the case of pre-tensioning, there is no loss due to friction as the concrete is not being hardened at the time of tensioning the tendons. Frictional loss occurs only in post-tension beams. When the cable is stressed, friction between the sides of the duct and the cable does not permit full tension to be transmitted. Therefore, at a point away from the jacking end, pre-stress is less. Frictional loss is due to the length effect and curvature effects. 
The tendons are provided inside the precast concrete member. So the loss due to friction between the concrete surface and the tendon is accompanied by the wobble effect. Lastly, the loss due to anchorage seating. Anchorage, as the name signifies, is a component that is used to anchor the tendons while terminating the tendons. The main function of anchorage is to transfer the stressing force to the concrete once the stressing process is completed. In the case of pretensioning, the tendons are embedded in the concrete, so no external anchorage is provided, hence there is no loss due to anchorage. Three. While in the case of post-tensioning, tendons are provided inside, so if it displaces from its original position, it allows loosening of the tendons causing loss of pre-stress. If pre-stress is measured at the time of pulling, the stress is termed the jacking stress, deducting the loss due to anchorage take-up and friction, initial pre-stress is obtained. My greetings again to everyone, classmates and engineers at Ascari. At this point of our report, we'll be applying what we learned from the discussion beforehand to some sample problems. First, let us try to solve a problem pertaining to partial loss of pre-stress due to elastic shortening of concrete or pre-tension elements. A pre-tensioned pre-stress beam has a span of 50 feet as shown in the figure. For this beam, the following properties are given. 1. We have the compressive strength of the concrete at 6,000 PSI. Number two, we have the ultimate tensile strength of pre-stressing tendon at 270,000 PSI. Next, we have the initial compressive strength of the concrete at 4,500 PSI. We also have the area of the pre-stressing tendons. We have 10 of one half diameter 7 wire strand tendon. I will explain later how it came to 1.53 square inches. We also have the beam dimensions, the height of 30 inches, width of 15 inches, and the height of the tendon from the bottom fiber of 4 inches. And finally, we have the modulus of elasticity at 27 by 10 raised to 6 psi. Calculate the concrete fiber stresses at transfer at the centroid of the tendon for the mid-span section of the beam and the magnitude of loss in pre-stress due to the effect of elastic shortening of the concrete. The formula that we will be using is the partial loss of pre-stress due to elastic shortening of concrete is equals to N times FCS. To head start, let us first solve for the area of the concrete. Area of the concrete is equal to its height times its width. So 30 inches times 15 inches is equal to 450 square inches. Next, we solve for the moment inertia of the concrete. The moment inertia of the concrete is equal to the width multiplied by its height cubed divided by 12. So 15 times 30 cubed divided by 12. Our answer will be 33,750 inches to the fourth. We then divide the moment inertia of the concrete to its area to get the distance from the rotational axis R squared. So 33,750 divided by 450, our distance from the rotational axis R squared is 75 square inches. For the area of the pre-stressing strand, uh, consider a figure of seven circles of equal diameter. The circles are so placed that six of them surrounds one central circle. We then consider the three circles at the middle segment of the figure. We know that, I, that the diameter of seven wire strand is one and a half is a half inch. In an equation form. That will be 3 times the individual diameter of the circles equals to 0 0.5. Solving that equation, the individual diameter of the circles is 1 sixth of an inch. 
Using that value to get the area per circle, we get 1 over 144 pi. Multiply that by 7 circles, we have an area of 0 0.153 square inch. And since we have 10 pieces of strand of these specific dimensions, we have a total area of the pre-stressing strand at 1.53 square inches. For the eccentricity of the tendon, we divide the height of the concrete by 2, then lessen it by the height of the tendon from the bottom fiber. So that's 30 divided by 2, then the result will be subtracted by 4 inches, gaining the eccentricity at 11 inches. Assuming that PI is approximately equal to PJ, we solve for the initial pre-stressing force. Our equation for the initial pre-stressing force is FCS equals to the 75% of the ultimate tensile strength of pre-stressing tendons times the area of the pre-stressing tendon. So that's 0 0.75 times 270,000 times 1.53. The result is 309,825 pounds. We then solve for the self-weight moment m. The equation for moment m is w times l squared divided by 8. So that's 15 times 30 divided by 144 times 150 multiplied by the quantity of 50 squared divided by 8 multiplied by 12. Our moment result will be 1,757,813 inch pound. Since we already solved the required values to find FCS, we will input them to the equation FCS is equals to PI divided by area of the concrete times the quantity of 1 plus E squared divided by R squared plus moment times E divided by the moment inertia. So that's 309,825 divided by 450 times the quantity of 1 plus 11 squared divided by 75 plus 1,757,813 times 11 divided by 33,750. Our FCS will be negative 1,226.4 PSI. This means that our FCS is a compressive stress due to sign convention. Since we are tackling about initial pre-stressing force, we need to find the initial modulus of elasticity of the concrete by the formula ECI is equal to 57,000 times the square root of FCI. So that's 57,000 times the square root of 4,500. Our ECI will be 3.824 times 10 raised to 6 PSI. Subsequently, we will get the initial modular ratio N by the equation ES divided by ECI. So that's 27 by 10 to the 6 divided by 3.824 times 10 to the 6. Our N will be 7.06. Inputting those value to our loss due to elastic shortening equation, 7.06 times 1,226.4, our loss of pre-stress due to elastic shortening is 8,659.2 PSI. Let us now proceed in solving for a problem relating to the loss of pre-stress due to elastic shortening for the post-tension elements. From the previous problem, if the beam is post-tension and the pre-stressing operation is such that A, two tendons are checked at a time, B, one tendon is checked at a time, and C, all tendons are simultaneously tensioned. To begin, the formula that we will be using is the partial loss of pre-stress due to elastic shortening of concrete for post-tension members is equal to 1 divided by N times the summation of all jacking operations times the partial loss of pre-stress due to elastic shortening of concrete for pre-tension members where N is the number of tendons or pairs of tendons to be jacked. From the previous problem, our partial loss 
due to elastic shortening for pretension member is equals to 8,659.2 PSI. For situation A, we know that there are 10 pieces of pre-stressing strands. If two tendons are jacked at a time, then we will have 5 pairs of pre-stressing strands. Note that for post-tension members, the first tendon will suffer the maximum loss of, while the last tendon will not suffer any loss. Applying that to our problem, the first four pairs of tendons suffer the effects of loss, while the last pair does not suffer any loss. We therefore do not include the last pair in the summation of jacking operations. Solving it, our equation will be the loss due to elastic shortening is equals to 1 divided by 5 times the quantity of 4 over 4 plus 3 over 4 plus 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4 times 8,659.2. Our answer will be 4,330 PSI. For situation B, we will just do what we did from the previous situation. Only this time, one tendon is jacked at a time. We then infer that the first nine tendons suffer the effects of loss, while the last tendon does not. Putting it in our equation, the loss due to elastic shortening is equals to 1 divided by 10 times the quantity of 9 over 9 plus 8 over 9 plus 7 over 9 plus 6 over 9 plus 5 over 9 plus 4 over 9 plus 3 over 9 plus 2 over 9 plus 1 over 9 times 8,659.2, our answer will be 4,330 PSI. For situation C, we know that if all tendons are tension, the loss due to elastic shortening will be zero. Therefore, the answer for this problem is the loss of pre-stress due to elastic shortening is equals to zero. Moving on to the next sample problem, we will try to solve the first problem. This time, we have to find the loss due to grip. The problem states, compute the loss in pre-stress due to grip from the first problem given that the total superimposed load, excluding the beam's own weight after transfer, is 375 PLF. To solve this problem, we are going to use the formula delta FPCR equals to N times KCR times the quantity of FCS bar minus FCSD bar, which is an equation provided by ACI ASCE, where N is the modular ratio. KCR is the coefficient of normal concrete that's 2.0 for pretension and 1.6 for post tension member. FCS bar is the stress in concrete at level of steel CGS immediately after transfer, and FCS D bar is the stress in concrete at the level of steel CGS due to all superimposed dead loads applied after pre stressing is accomplished. You have to take note that KCR should be reduced by 20% for lightweight concrete. At full strength of the concrete, the modulus of elasticity is equal to 57,000 times the square root of FC prime. So that's 57,000 times the square root of 6,000. Our modulus of elasticity for the concrete will be 4.415 times 10 raised to 6 PSI. We know that from the first problem, the modulus of elasticity of the pre-stressing strand is 37 by 10 raised to 6 PSI. Using those values to find our modular ratio n, 37 by 10 raised to 6 divided by 4.415 times 10 raised to 6, the result will be 6.12. <clears throat> to find FCSD bar, we have to find the result of the equation MSD times E divided by IC. To solve for MSD first, so that's 375 times 50 squared divided by 8. We'll then multiply that result by 12 because the given are in terms of feet and we need to convert those to inches. Our MSD will then be 1,406,250 inch pound. From the first problem, the moment inertia of the concrete is 33,750. 
putting those values to our equation, our FCST bar will be 458.3 PSI. From the first problem, FCS is the same as FCS bar. Therefore, FCS bar is 1226.4 PSI. And since our beam is pretension and normal concrete, our KCR value is 2.0. Putting those values to our loss in Christian's YouTube prep equation, our final answer will be 9401.5 PSI. Good morning again, everyone, especially to our course instructor, Engineer Sadaskari. Continuing with our discussion, let us tackle some sample problems relating to shrinkage loss. The problem reads, compute the loss and pre-stress due to shrinkage from the first problem stated by the second reporter for the pre- and post-tension beams at 7 days after moisturing using both the ultimate P sub SH method and the time-dependent method. Assume that the re relative humidity Rh is 70% and the volume to surface ratio is 2.0. Using P sub H, P sub S, H method, the equation that we will be using is delta F sub P S H equals quantity 8.2 times 10 is to negative 6 times P sub S, H, e P sub P S times 1 minus 0 0.06 V over S times 100 minus R H where P sub SH equals 1.0 for pre-tension beams. Elastic of elasticity, modulus of elasticity or E sub PS equals 27 times 10 distance positive 6 from the first problem. So V over S equals 2.0. RH equals 70%. Therefore, Delta F sub P sub P, uh, delta F sub P S S, S H equals 8.2 times 10 this to negative 6 times 1.0 times 27 times 10 this to positive 6 and bracket 1 minus 0 0.06 times 2.0 then close bracket and quantity time 100 minus 70 so delta f sub psh equals 5845.0 psi for the post tension beam for the first problem we know that the pre stress loss due to shrinkage will be somewhat lesser at some as some shrinkage has already taken place before post tensioning our equation will be so our equation will be delta F sub P S H equals P sub S H times delta F sub P S H. For P sub S H equals 0 0.77 from the value provided by PCI for 7 days curing. Therefore, um, delta F sub P S H. PSH equals 0 .0 0.77 times 5845 equals 4500.7 PSI. Using the time dependent method, we are going to use the equation. So, strain, strain, strain sub SH. Gamma T equals T over 30, uh, 35 plus T times strain S sub H U. And subsequently, delta F sub P S H equals strain S sub H gamma T and e, re, uh, e sub S. We know that for, for both steam and moist cured concrete, the average ultimate sinkage strain value as given by ECI 209 R-209 report is 780 times 
10 this to negative 6 in per in ins per ins and our beam was cured for 7 days we are going to use those values so strain s sub h comma t equals t over 35 plus t strain sub uh, s sub h u equals 7 over 35 plus 7 times 780 times 10 raised to negative 6 equals 130 times 10 raised to negative 6 inch over inch and that the modulus of elasticity of our concrete is 27 times 10 this to positive 6 from the first problem then delta f sub p s h equals strain s sub h comma t then e sub s equals 130 times 10 this to negative 6 times 27 times 10 this to positive 6 equals 3510 psi moving on to the next sample problem let us try to solve the press stress loss due to friction the problem reads assume that the alignment characteristics of the tendons in the post tension beam for the first problem are shown in the figure if the tendon is made of seven wire uncoated strands in flexible metal shaping compute the frictional loss of stress and the pre stressing wire wires due to the curvature and wobble effects for the first problem we know that the initial pre stressing force is 309825 pounds and that the area of the pre stressing strand is 1.53 square inches by dividing the initial pre stressing force by the area of the pre stressing strand we have the initial pre-stressing stress of 202,500 psi. To find the central angle alpha, we solve it as alpha equals 8y over x equals 8 times parenthesis 11 over 50 parenthesis 12 equals 0.1467 region. The y value in this equation is the eccentricity of the tendon from the normal axis of the concrete and the x value is the length of the beam. We just have to multiply it by 12 to have the unit cons consistency. Referring to the wobble and curvature friction coefficients given by the PCI, PCI our k equals 0 0.0020 and mu equals 0 0.20. Our loss of prestige will be then so del delta f sub p f equals f sub p i times new alpha x alpha plus k l delta f sub p f equals two hundred two thousand five hundred times zero point zero zero point two zero times 0 0.1647 plus parenthesis 0 0.0020 times 50 equals 26,191 psi. Note that this loss is 12.93% of the initial press stress. Next, let us solve for our final sample problem relating to loss of press stress due to anchorage setting. According to the problem, compute the anchorage setting loss in the post tension beam of the first problem if the estimated slip is 1 fourth inch. From the first problem, the modulus of elasticity of the press tracing strand is 27, 27 times 10 this to 6 psi and the given estimated slip is 1 fourth inch or 0 0.25 inch in the length of the beam is 50 feet. Our prestige loss due to anchorage setting loss will be then so del, delta F sub P E equals delta E over L times E sub P S equals 0 0.25 over 50 times 12 times quantity 27 times 10 this to positive 6 equals 11,250 psi. Our length of 50 feet must be multiplied by 12 to have the unit consistency. 
So let us move on to the next topic of our discussion, which is the step-by-step -step computation of all time-dependent losses in a pretension beam. We have an example here now, so allow me to read it to you. A simply supported pretension 70 foot 70 feet span light with steam cured double T beam, as shown in the figure below, is pre-stressed by 12 half inch diameter 270k grade stress relief struts. The strands are hard and the eccentricity at mid span is 18.73 inches and at the end 12.98 inches. Compute the pre stress loss at the critical section in the beam of 0.40 span due to dead load and superimposed dead load at A, stage 1 at transfer, B, stage 2 after concrete topping is placed, and C, 2 years after concrete topping is placed. Uh, suppose that the topping is 2 inches, uh, normal weight concrete cast at 30 days. And suppose also that the pre-stress transfer occurred 18 hours after tensioning the strands. Given, uh, we also have the following given, the compressive strength of the concrete at 5,000 PSI, that's a lightweight concrete, and we also have its initial compressive strength at 3,500 PSI. Also given are the non-composite section properties. So we have the area of the concrete at 615 square inches. We have the moment inertia of the concrete, of 59,720 inches to the fourth. We also have the, uh, what you call this, the uh, distance from the center of gravity to the extreme bottom fiber at 21.98 inches. And the distance from the center of gravity to the extreme top fiber of 10.2 inches. And we also have the modulus of section for the bottom fiber of 2,717 cubic inches and we also have the modulus of section for the top fiber at 5,960 cubic inches. Also included is the weight due to dead load. So if we have no, if the beam has no, has no topping yet, uh, the weight due to dead load is 491 PLF and when it has the, uh, the 2 inch topping, the weight due to dead load is 250 PLF. We also have a given weight due to live load of 40 PSF. We also have the ultimate tensile strength of the pre-stressing tendon of 270,000 PSI. Also included, uh, also given is the uh, the yield strength of pre-stressing steel FPY that is 0.85 of FPU. So FPY is approximately equal to 230,000 psi. We also have the initial pre-stress loss uh, that is 0.70 of the FPU and 0.82 of FPY. So our Initial pre-stress loss is 189,000 PSI. So we also have, uh, finally, we also have the modulus of elasticity of the pre-stress strands at 28 by 10 raised to 6 PSI. So solving it, we have the initial, pre uh, the initial compressive strength of the concrete at 3,500 PSI. Uh, using this, we can solve for the mod initial modulus of elasticity of the concrete so 115 raised to 2.5 times 33 times the square root of 3500 our initial modulus of elasticity for the concrete is 2.41 times 10 raised to 6 psi and solving for the modulus of elasticity of the concrete that is 115 times uh, 115 raised to 1.5 times 33 times the square root of 5,000. Our modulus of elasticity of the concrete is 2.88 times 10 raised to 6 psi. 
So let us solve for, for the stage 1 or the stress transfer. We have to solve first for the elastic shortening. Uh, we have the given critical section distance from the support that is 0.40 times 70. So we have 28 feet grip uh, of distance from the critical, critical section to the support. And we also have the eccentricity at the critical section that is 12.98 plus 0.8 times the quantity of 18.73 minus 12.98 equals to 17.58 inches. We also have to solve for the dead load moment at 0.40 of the mid span. So that's dead load moment times the weight due to dead load times x over 2 times the quantity of L minus x. So we, we know that the weight due to dead load is 491. So 491 times 28 divided by 2 times the whole span of the beam, that's 70 minus 28. Our moment due to dead load in feet inch, uh, in feet, uh, in feet pound is 288,708. Converting it to inch pound will get us 3,464,000. 4,496. So let us solve for, uh, we also have to solve for the initial pre-stress loss. So we know that the initial pre-stress loss is 0.70 of the, uh, of the ultimate tensile strength of the pre-stressing tendon. So 0.70 times 270,000, our initial pre-stress loss is 189,000 PSI. So assuming that the elastic shortening loss and steel stress loss is approximately equal to 18,000 PSI, then the net steel stress FPI is equal to 189,000 minus 18,000. Uh, our net steel stress is 171,000 PSI. Solving for the initial pre-stressing force, our initial pre-stressing force is the area of the pre-stressing strand times the initial pre-stress loss. So that is 12 times 0 0.153. We have to multiply uh, the area of the pre-stressing strand by 12 because the uh, uh, so that we, ha we could have a unit consistency. So that's 12 times 0 0.153 times 171,000 our initial pre-stressing force is 313,956 pounds. We also have for, uh, we also need to solve for the distance from the rotational axis R squared. So we just have to divide the, in, uh, the moment inertia of the concrete by its area. So 59,720 divided by 615. Our distance from the rotational axis is 97.1 square inch. And then solving for FCS. So the formula for FCS is FCS equals to negative P sub I divided by A sub C times the quantity of 1 plus E squared divided by R squared plus M sub D times E divided by I sub C. So our FCS will then become negative 1115.3 PSI. So we can conclude that this uh, that the that this type of stress is a compressive stress. And solving for the modular ratio, modular ratio uh, we can get the modular ratio from after dividing the modul uh, modulus of elasticity of the pre-stressing strand. By the modulus of elasticity, by the initial modulus of elasticity of the concrete, so that is twenty-eight times ten raised to six divided by two point forty-one times ten raised to six. Our modular ratio will then become eleven point sixty-two. So solving for the pre-stress loss due to elastic shortening, n times FCS, so eleven point sixty-two times 1115.3 our pre-stress loss due to elastic shortening will be will be 12958 psi so if we are going to use the initial pre-stress loss of 189000 and the net fpi 
is equals to 189,000 minus the pre-stress loss due to elastic shortening, uh, 12,958. Then our net will become 176,000, 0.42 PSI. And we have the, uh, we have, we have to solve for the bar FCS. So solving for that, we will have negative 1,178.3 PSI. And then resolving for the, ano natin, for the pre-stress loss due to elastic shortening, we get 13,690. So comparing that to the previous uh, pre-stress loss due to elastic shortening, we have a small difference of negative six percent. So, yung, so the assumption that the ten percent of a uh, ten percent loss at the beginning in estimating p sub i equals to 0.9 of p sub j would have been adequate. So, solving for the steel stress relaxation. We have to calculate the steel stress relaxation at transfer. So that is the yield strength of the pre stressing steel. So it was given that it was 230,000 psi. And we also have the initial pre stressing, initial pre stress loss of 189,000 or the net FPI of 171,000 psi could be used. And we also know that it. Uh, that we have a given time of 18 hours. So solving for the pre-stress relaxation, so the, the equation for that is FPI times log T2 minus log T1 divided by 10 times the quantity of FPI divided by FPY minus 0 0.55. Solving for this loss due to steel stress relaxation, we get uh, we get 6,447 PSI. Uh, so we had the, after that, we then add the pre-stress loss due to elastic shortening and and the steel stress relaxation. So that is 12,958 plus 6,447 will give us an approximate value of 18,000 PSI. So the assumption was okay. So we have uh the for the creep loss we have a zero value for its pre stress loss also for the shrinkage loss so let us add the total loss from all of those uh, all of, all those types of loss so the stage one total losses are delta fpt is equals to the pre stress loss from the elastic shortening from the steel steel relaxation from creep and shrinkage. So that's 12,958 plus 6,447 plus 0 plus 0. Our total for stage 1 is 19,405 PSI. So continuing for the stage 2, uh, that is transfer to placement of topping after 30 days, we have to solve for this stage, first the uh, creep loss. So we know that the modulus of elasticity of the concrete is, is 2.88 times 10 raised to 6 psi, and the modulus of elasticity of the pre stressing strand is 28 times 10 raised to 6 psi. So using those values, you could get the modular ratio. Our modular ratio will become 9.72. And solving for uh, and solving for FCS bar from the previous uh, from the previous stage, our FCS bar is one thousand one hundred fifteen point three psi. So we also have to solve for the weight, uh, the intensity, the intensity of two inch normal weight concrete topping. So the weight due to the Normal weight concrete is 2 divided by 12 times 10 times 150 will get us 240, uh, 250 PLF. So the moment due to the 2 inch topping is, it uh, will be, will get us to 1,764,000 inch pound.
and solving for the FCSD bar, we gain 519.3 PSI. So, although the 30 days duration is short for a long term effect, the, it, the approximation is sufficient to be justified in stage 2 using the creep factor K sub CR to account for stage 3 as well. And for the lightweight concrete, we can use the uh, we can use the K sub CR value of 2.0, and since it is a lightweight concrete, we have to reduce it by 80%. So our K sub CR value is 1.6. And so the pre-stress loss due to long-term creep is delta F PCR equals to N times K C R times the quantity of FCS bar minus FCS T bar will get us 9,269 PSI. And then solving for the shrinkage loss, assume that the relative humidity RH is 70%. Then the prestige loss due to long term shrinkage is defined by the formula delta FPSH is equals to 8.2 times 10 raised to negative 6 times K sub SH times E sub PS times the quantity of 1 minus 0 0.06 times V over S times the quantity of 100 minus RH. So, solving for our volume to surface ratio, so 615 divided by 364, our volume to surface ratio will be, uh, will be 1.69. And our K sub SH value is 1.0 for pretension member. So our precess loss due to shrinkage is 6,190 PSI. And then solving for the solving for the steel stress relaxation loss at 30 days, we have a given time. Of 18 hours so after 30 days our hours will then become 730 hours because there, in one uh, in one day we have 24 hours so 30 days times 24 hours will get us a a t2 of 730 hours so from stage one the given fps the solved fps is equals to 169,595 Using those values, we could get the steel stress relaxation loss of 5,091 PSI. So the stage 2 total loss is you simply is you have to simply add all of those loss with, uh, that we have solved before for the stage 2. So that is the stress is the stress loss is the pre-stress loss due to prep, due to shrinkage, and due to steel stress relaxation. So our total our total loss for stage 2 is 20,550 PSI. The increase in stress in the stretch due to the addition of tapping will then become 5,048 PSI. Hence, the strand stress at end of stage 2 is 154,093 PSI. So, for the final situation of our problem, we, we will solve for the stage 3, or at the end of 2 years. So the values for long-term creep and long-term shrinkage evaluated at stage 2 are assumed to have a, to have, to do not have a increase significant. So since the long-term values of K sub C are for creep and K sub SH for shrinkage were used in stage 2 computations, uh, accordingly, for the we have an F sub PE value of 154,093 PSI, and we also have the T1 value of 720 hours and T2 value of 17,520 hours because in a year we have 365 days and in a day we have 24 hours, so that's two years times. 365 times 34 over T2 will be 17,520. Uh, inputting those values to the steel stress relaxation loss equation, 
uh, we have the Sylstest relaxation loss of 2,563 PSI. So the stand stress F sub PE at the end of stage 3 is approximately equal to 154,093 minus 2,563 will become 151,530 PSI. So the table you see below is the summary of stresses for the retention member. So we have the final net, uh, final net stress or F sub P at 151,530 PSI and the percentage of loss is 19.9% or 20% for this pretension mean. Let us move to the last topic of our discussion which is the step-by-step -step computation of all time dependent losses in a post-tension beam. We have a sample problem here, let me read it for you. Example 3.9. Solve example 3.8. Assuming that the beam is post tension, assume all that the anchorage seating loss is 1 fourth inch and that all strands are simultaneously tensioned in a flexible duct. Also, assume that the total jacking force prior to the friction and anchorage seating losses are resulted and if sub pi equals 1. 89,000 psi. F sub P sub G equals F sub PI of equation 3.1 D in this case. Solution A anchorage seating loss is a delta A equals 1 fourth inch or equals 0 0.25 inch. L equals 70 feet. From equation 3.28, the anchorage slip stress loss is delta F sub PE equals delta A over L times E sub PS equals 0 0.25 over 70 times 12 times 28 times 10 is to 6, approximately 8,333 psi. For B, elastic shortening, since all jacks are simultaneously post tension, the elastic shortening will precipitate, precipitate during jacking. A result, no elastic shortening stress loss takes place and the tendons, hence delta F sub PES equals zero. C, frictional loss, assume that the parabolic tendon approximates the shape of an arc of a circle. Then from equation 3.23, alpha equals 8y over x equals 8 times quantity 18.73 minus 12.99 divided by 70 of times 12 equals 0.0548 region. From table 3.7, use k equals 0.001. And mu equals 0 0.25. Then from equation 3.8, um, F sub pi equals 186,000 psi. From equation 3.22, the stress, loss, and press stress due to friction is delta F sub pf equals F sub pi times mu alpha plus pl equals 189,000 times 0 0.25 times 0 0.0548 plus 0 0.001 times 70 equals 15,819 psi. The stress remaining in the pre-stressing steel after all initial instantaneous losses is F sub pi equals 189,000 minus 8,300 38 minus 0 minus 15 point uh, 15,819 equals 164,848 psi. Hence, the net pre force is P sub i equals 164, 164,848 times 12 times 0 0.153 equals 296. 296, 296,726 pounds compared to P sub I equals 300 
11,376 pounds in the pretension case of example 3.8. Stage 1, stress at transfer. Anchorage setting loss. Loss equals 8,333 PSI. Net stress equals 164,848 PSI. Then B, relaxation loss, delta F sub PR equals 164,848 times log 18 over 10 times 164,848 over 230,000 minus 0.55 approximately equals to 3,450 psi. Creep loss. Delta F sub PRCR equals zero. Shrinkage loss. Delta F sub PSH equals zero. So the tendon stress at PI at the end of stage one is 164,848 minus 3,450 equals 161,398 PSI. Stage, stage two. Transfer to placement of tapping after 30 days. Rip loss. PI equals 161,398 times 12 times 0.53 equals 296,327 pounds. F sub C S equals PI over E sub C times 1 plus E raised to 2 over R square plus M sub D E over I sub C equals 296,327 over 615 times 1 plus parenthesis 17.58 uh, square over 97.11 plus 3,464 3,464,490 times 17.8 uh, 17.5958 over 59,720 equals negative 2,016,022 plus 1,020 equals negative 996.2 psi hence the creep loss for lightweight concrete e sub cr is reduced by 20 percent hence equals 16 uh, 1.6 times 0 0.880 equals 1.28 delta f sub pcr equals n k sub cr times F sub C S minus F sub C D sub C S D equals 9.72 times 1.28 times 996.2 minus 519.3 equals 9,933 psi. Shrinkage loss from equation 3.8 K sub S H equals 0 0.58 at 30 days. Table 3.6 Delta F sub P S H equals 6,190 times 0.58 equals 3,990 PSI. C still relaxation loss at 30 days. F sub P S equals 161. 161,398 PSI. The, rela the relaxation loss in, in stress becomes delta F sub PR equals 161,398 times log 720 minus log 18 over 10 times 161,908 over 23,000 minus 0 0.55 equals for approximately 3 point uh, 3,923 psi. Stage 2, total losses. Delta F sub PT equals delta F 
sub PCR plus delta N, PSH plus delta N sub PR equals 5,933 plus 3,590 plus 3,923 equals 13,446 PSI. Or from example 3.8, the increase in stress in the strands due to the addition of topping is F sub sub D, F sub SD equals 5,048 PSI. Hence, the strand stress at the end of stage 2 is F sub PT equals F sub PS minus delta F sub PT plus delta F sub SD equals 161,398 minus 13,448 plus 5,048 equals 153,000 PSI. Stage 3 at end of 2 years. So, F sub PE equals 153,000 PSI. T sub 1 equals 720 hours. T sub 2 equals 17,520 hours. The still relaxation stress loss is delta F sub PR equals 153,000 times log 17,520 minus log 700. 20 over 10 times 153,000 divided by 230,000 minus 0 0.55, approximately 2,444 PSI. Using the same assumptions for stage 3 creep in shrinkage as in, as in example 3.8, the strand stress F sub P C. At the end of stage 3 is approximately 153,244 equals 150,536 PSI.